Uh, I want to start off with basically what is exercise. Um, and so defining exercise is definitely something that um, the fitness industry does not do a very good job of. Um, and so this particular definition comes from uh, Dr. Doug McGuff, who wrote a book called Body by Science. And he defines exercise as a specific activity that stimulates a positive physiological adaptation that serves to enhance fitness and health. And the reason why that this is highlighted and underlined, it does not undermine the latter in the process of enhancing the former. Um, mm -hmm. So there are a lot of exercises out there that while you're doing form of movement and you're doing things, if they end up hurting you, go ahead and go to the next slide if you wouldn't mind, um, then what was the purpose? I mean, the goal when exercises should be to receive the most benefit in the least amount of time mm -hmm. with the least amount of potential for injury in that period. I don't care what you're doing um, in life uh, as, you know, look at our species. Um, our homo sapien brain is designed around uh, mitigating risk and immediately determining is that a risk or a potential threat and then immediately running. I mean, the, the fight or flight response in our, our brain uh, that applies to exercise as well. If, uh, if you're putting yourself in a compromised position with the end goal of achieving a better result, it just doesn't, there, there's probably a smarter way to do it. And, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that today on, on what the smarter ways are to do that, okay? Next slide, please. So why is exercise important? Uh, to be completely honest, it isn't. Um, if you think about, you know, uh, the evolution of our species, you know, 50,000 years, uh, just roughly in the last 10,000 years, we've, you know, developed into, uh, you know, groups of roughly 150 or, or more. Um, we were hunters and gatherers. And so uh, when we were hunters and gatherers, you were obviously constantly looking for food. You were constantly gathering or, or trying to hunt your, your next meal. Um, if you look at the way we decide on when to eat, I mean, right now we can push it all the way to the point where I'm hungry. I grab my phone, I click Uber Eats, I select two items and it arrives on my doorstep 15 to 35 minutes later. Okay, so we're, we, we've turned ourselves into sitters and orderers. And so if you want to devolve the species that is Homo sapien, um, the best way to do that would be to feed it an abundance of calories and let it not move. Um, a whole lot of really, really bad things are going to happen if you do that. Um, so if you're going to perform exercise, obviously the goal of that would be to, to try to um, take back some of the youthful existence that you had before. Every single one of us upon birth was born with the exact same amount of muscles. Um, you know, I hear a lot of times, you know, oh, I want an eight pack. I'm like, unless you have a genetic predisposition that I'm unaware of, you have the same amount of abdominal muscles as a person uh, that is showing their eight pack abs. The difference is you have a significant layer of subcutaneous fat that's hiding said abdominal muscles. You were born with them just like anybody else. I use my eight year old nephew as a, an example. Um, that kid had an eight pack when he was five years old. I never saw him do a sit up a day in his life. He just had a lack of body fat, which made his abdominal muscles or region, you know, uh, available to see. All right. Uh, next slide, please. And so when we think about targeting fat loss, when people think about, okay, well, if I have this subcutaneous layer of fat uh, that's covering my abdominal region and I want to get rid of it, what's the best way to do it? And uh, unfortunately um, for Almost everyone in America, we've been fed a, a big load of lies, you know, is cardio, and I'm doing air quotes, if you can see me, I don't know if you can or not, um, is cardio better for targeting fat loss? Um, if I were to pull the room right now, probably everyone would say yes. Um, all due respect, the answer is actually no, it is not. So next slide. Uh, resistance exercise specifically done with either weights or some form, it can be resistance bands. If you can have a varied resistance, it has a better cardiovascular effect on the body than any steady state cardio, than equal amounts of steady state cardio. And so when I define steady state cardio, I mean, you know, light jogging, uh, running, where you're basically choosing a specific targeted heart rate and you're keeping at that. Um, the goal of movement 
I mean, it should be movement with purpose. Um, you know, have you, has anybody ever seen a hamster on one of those wheels? In my mind, that's what you look like when you're on a treadmill. <laughs> Who wants to be a hamster on a wheel with no purpose? The goal of movement should be for a purpose, a specific derived outcome. And, and so what resistance exercise has been proven to do and can do, it affects both the anaerobic and aerobic subsects of a cell and its metabolism. And so the goal of exercise should be to rev up your metabolism. And unfortunately, too much aerobic exercise or cardio, uh, it actually does the exact opposite. It upregulates cortisol. Um, it tells your body that we are now going to be going on these long journeys uh, to sustain said long journeys. I would like for you to hold on to a little bit of stored uh, energy for me in the form of fat cells. And so that's exactly what a, a globular or a pound of fat is. Uh, one pound of fat is representative of about 3,500 energy calories. And so it's important to understand that when we do mechanical work, or, or when we try to fatigue the body's musculature, it's gonna improve mineral bone density because the moment you try to increase your lean or skeletal muscle tissue, your bone raises its hand and says, well, I'm the one that supports that. So I'm gonna to need to also get stronger. And so that's actually a byproduct of it. Uh, it, it controls your glucose control your, or, your, or your regulation of insulin. Um, so again, something that a lot of people are struggling with right now. It changes your body composition. So your body fat percentage from unhealthy ratios to healthy ratios. And then more importantly, overall strength. So your ability to just do normal day-to-day -day tasks. Um, carrying, I mean, there's not a person on this call right now that hasn't you know, had to carry multiple, multiple things of groceries while grabbing something else. Believe it or not, those small little day-to-day -day events can compromise our actual physical and our physiology. I mean, you've heard of people throwing, oh, what threw on my back? What were you doing? Something, some form of exercise? No, I was getting the groceries out of the back of the SUV. I mean, that happens all the time. Steve said, I wonder if yard work counts. Yard work is definitely an activity. It's definitely a form of movement. It is not exercise as I'm going to define it. So exercise, I want you to consider it a metabolic stress, it views, your body views exercise as a metabolic stress or an irritant that a, a, a required response is necessary. And I'll explain that. Go ahead and go to the next uh, slide, please. So there's a catch. Exercise produces as a whole, no benefit whatsoever to the body. It's actually merely a stimulant. So I'll take an exercise, a barbell curl. Everyone can envision what a barbell curl uh, essentially looks like. The barbell curl as a whole does nothing to your bicep region. It's merely the necessary stimulus that could potentially trigger an adaptive response. And so what, what the kind of organism response ratio, what you see down there at the very bottom, um, which is SOR, it stands for uh, stimulus on an organism will create an adaptive response. And so <laughs> what you have to learn about skeletal muscle tissue is that it is our most preserved biologic function. The, the, the purpose of it is, is so that we can A, keep from becoming food and go get food. Okay. And so in doing so, it actually sends a lot of important signals to the rest of the tissue on your body. I.e. I just described the more, you know, the more muscle I have on my body, then the more, you know, mineral bone density or strong bones I have to have to support that. Um, nervous tissues involved in that, brain tissues involved in that. So it is uh, by far your largest endocrine organ. And so it sends out signal messages to the rest of your body. And so if you think about your central nervous system as say a board of directors, that board of directors you would think is actually working for you. Sometimes it's actually not working for you because unfortunately, while they are a group of amazing engineers, they cannot talk to you. So you have to be able to send your board of engineers a signal that tells them either build fat or build muscle, either build bone or build muscle. It, you have to send signals to your body. And a lot of times right now, we're sending the wrong signals. We're sending them the wrong signals because the uh, exercise that we do is of insufficient stimulus because of the, um, the movements that we're making or the lack of movements. We're telling our body, look, I'm just going to be here. I'm going to be a couch potato. I'm going to be sedentary. I'm going to feed you calories. And your body is like, oh, okay, well, we only need 1,200. What do you want me to do with the extra 600 that you just gave me? You're like, store it as fat, man. Store it. Obviously, that's what I want. 
we're sending it the wrong signals. And so as a result of that, a lot of things start to happen. Your body, uh, all the inflammatory products that go along with that, uh, the cytokine signaling. And again, I won't get too, too technical into the kind of the, the, the biology or the physiology of that. But for the most part, it is basically us telling our body the wrong thing. And But the great news is we have the ability to tell it the right thing. Just as equally as you you tell your child you may have that chocolate milk, you can easily turn around and say, no, you may not have that chocolate milk. Uh, next slide, please. So if you struggle to get motivated to work out, I want to be very clear that 20 minutes, honestly, one time a week of properly performed resistance exercise is enough. And I'm not just using 20 minutes because I happen to own and run a facility that uh, you can do it anywhere. And I want to be very clear that any form of this, and there are multiple, multiple variations on there, um, you want to focus on as much as possible a very slow cadence movement. And so kind of where this was discovered is, um, believe it or not, um, late 70s, Arthur Jones, who created the Nautilus equipment, uh, which everyone has probably seen a piece of Nautilus equipment in, in their standard gym, he actually funded a study to figure out if osteopenia could be stopped or reversed. And so osteopenia, the loss of, of mineral bone density. And so he took a group of elderly, you know, men and men and women. Um, and so when you introduce an exercise protocol to a very, very fragile group, obviously the protocol would need to be very slow uh, cadence. So not only did it reverse osteopenia, it increased, they were able to adapt skeletal muscle tissue at a very, very, they went from bedridden to, to being able to walk on their own volition. And so everyone just kind of looked at it and said, okay, well, they were so deconditioned that any form of exercise is going to be a benefit. And so they turned around and took it in a uh, same protocol, changed nothing at all, and did that on athletes. And, and, and the numbers, as you can imagine, were, were incredible. Their hormonal releases were uh, far superior to any exercise they were formerly performing. And so the goal of a, of a true exercise program would be to fatigue the musculature to the point of what's known as momentary muscular failure or momentary muscular fatigue, which means if my rep if my repetition cadence is I'm pressing out and I'm slowly lowering back in, pressing out, slowly lowering back in, we never come to the point of lockout where our bones are now supporting the, the weight or load. And we never come to the point where we're resting anything on our, on, our, on our chest or on our body. We're constantly trying to move it. And then once that movement becomes so 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 limited that we can't get to the to the most extended point we then do what are called diminishing repetition or ranges of motion until you literally cannot press that particular weight out anymore and that is what's known as momentary muscular fatigue if you currently choose your exercise protocol and say to yourself, well, you know what today I'm going to work the biceps and I'm going to walk into the gym I'm going to do 3 sets of 10 with all due respect, you've already chosen a failed plan because if you choose a weight that you can perform rep one and the same weight on rep 30, it wasn't of a deep enough stimulus to trigger the adaptive mm. response. Remember, you just told your body, look, I started with this. I ended with this. We had enough. We had enough reservoir. We had enough muscle. We had enough uh, glycogen ATP phosphate, which is the, the fuel that, that is inside of all of our muscles. Um, we had enough. We're good. No need to add on anymore. But when you fatigue it, when you compromise our most basic biologic function, which is movement, you send a very powerful signal to the body. And it says, this is probably not going to work out best for us if we continue to do this. So having said that, all the minerals, nutrients, and resources that come in today, we're going to partition toward creating a larger reservoir. So that in the event that we're equally met with whatever, and then again, blind and deaf engineers. They don't know if you're wrestling a saber tooth tiger, whether you're pushing a TV or whether you're grabbing a sledgehammer and beating up a, a, a tractor tire, which I do not recommend. Um, it doesn't know. It just sensed a signal. It, it, it realizes there was a threat. We didn't have enough to get to the finish line. And having said that, we need to make an adaptive response. Your job as the organism is to allow it time, rest, and nutrition. Because if you enter a new stimulus before the response was created, you actually, once again, 
might as well not have even exercised because you won't receive the benefit that you triggered your body to create. Um, for lack of a better analogy, think of a scab. If you've ever cut your finger and, and the skin, you know, created what's known as a scab. Um, anybody on the call ever picked that scab? Guess what happens? You start to bleed again. Why? Because your body wasn't done regenerating the necessary skin to cover so that that wouldn't happen again. It was relying on you leaving that scab there to protect it while it did its work. Your body muscles and exercise the exact same way. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So now let's talk about, we've talked about exercise and what's necessary there. And I told you that time, rest, and nutrition were key factors in everything that we're going to be doing. Um, so now we have to talk about nutrition, what it really is, what it should be. And again, I'm not going to give you any diet information. I'm not going to discuss anything about uh, macronutrients. I have changed from that because again, that's a, a subject that uh, we, we will, um, we could debate for days on end. Um, but if, next slide, please. What makes you gain weight? As I said before, what specifically makes you gain weight is lack of movement and an overabundance of calories. What is that gentleman doing right now? He's eating two very caloric dense items, probably has a, a Dr. Pepper inside of that cup right there, which is basically a big container of hummingbird food. It's probably not the water container that's next to him. And he's sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So he did nothing to obtain those, those calories that he's going to eat. He's probably not going to do anything to, to, to shed them off. And so he's sending to his body the most amazing signal, which says, we are currently in a time of feast. In the time of feast, I would like for you to store any excess calories that I give you in the form of these beautiful gobbles called fat. And so uh, as adults, just so you know, uh, you don't lose fat and you don't ever gain fat. Um, you have all the fat cells on your body that you're ever going to have. Um, a lot of studies have been done out in, uh, in Scandinavian countries uh, with uh, lap band. And so they come across, uh, Karolinka Institute is I think where it came from. They came a lot of information where they measured the amount of fat cells on a client that had say 300 uh, pounds. They did the lap band surgery. They lost 150 pounds, which is half of their body weight. And they have the exact same amount of fat cells. So think of your fat cells as a bunch of balloons. And those balloons can stay deflated and small, just like you get them when you get them in the package. Or if you give them too many calories, they go and they blow up. And when they blow up, they generally, the first layer would be the subcutaneous layer, which is just directly below your skin. And so you'll start to see that specifically in the abdominal region, sometimes for women on the, the hips and thighs. And then once you give it too, too much, then it starts to get into the visceral fat. And that visceral fat is the fat that's around our organs that causes a lot, a lot of bad things. Um, uh, next slide, please. So is it calories in and calories out? Almost. Almost. I want to be very clear. It's almost calories in, calories out. Um, I'm actually going to show you uh, an example of that. So, but what we have to understand is, is that 200 calories of broccoli is plate, you know, left. 200 calories of uh, whatever that is. I think that might be peanut butter. Is which one of these is going to fill you up? To be completely honest, you take that. I could easily eat a scoop of peanut butter all day long but it's not going to sustain me. It's not going to satiate me. It's not going to make me feel full. It's not going to give me the necessary energy I need. Okay. 200 calories of broccoli. One, it's fibrous. Two, it requires a lot of energy to chew that plate full of, of broccoli. So when thinking about how to attack nutrition and what's going to be the best is, again, I'm not going to preach, you know, whole food plant-based. I'm not going to preach, you know, uh, paleolithic diet. I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to find a good mix of, of, uh, of nutrients, but they're going to need to be roughly at where your caloric intake should be. Um, there are certain meats, fruits, and vegetables that will make you feel in a different way. Um, next slide, please. So what is a calorie? It's a unit of energy. And it's a relationship between, you know, matter and energy. It figures prominently among physical laws of the universe. All right. Um, there are no, there's, there's no feelings about it. Okay. There's no nutritional debate about it. It's basically the laws of physics or more importantly, thermodynamics. Uh, first law of thermodynamics, energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. It's just a transfer of energy. And so all you're trying to do, um, all our species was ever trying to do, was make sure that we had enough energy to be able to sustain whatever we were trying to, you know, to, to, to keep from uh, dying from, if you will. 
Okay. And then, so now you throw us into the 21st century and I mean, other than texting and driving, I don't, I don't think that my life is threatened very often. So it's not really hard. We don't have a lot of uh, threats that we need a calorie, calorie expenditure. Instead, we actually physically go to a place where we jump on a device that was originally a torture device. Did you know that a treadmill was originally devised as a torture device? When they captured someone, they would put them on a treadmill, make, make them run and run and run and run and run and run and run so much that their legs were so tired that they wouldn't think about running. That's, that's it. That's it. That was a torture device. Still is. Thank you, Steve. I agree. I agree. Um, so understanding that we do not have to do these things, that you're doing them as a result of taking in too many calories. Okay. Next slide, please. If you consume more calories than your body requires, again, it's going to store them in the form of fat. It's important to know what your BMR or RMR is. Um, BMR stands for basal metabolic rate. RMR stands for resting metabolic rate. They're kind of synonymous uh, terms. And um, understanding where your active metabolic rate is. So resting metabolic rate sounds exactly how it sounds. It means it's the number of calories that roughly my body would need to perform the, its daily basic functions, uh, which would mean, you know, hair, which apparently I don't get enough calories in, I guess, um, you know, skin regeneration, heart, lungs, functioning, all the things necessary to, to, to run your body, your brain, um, everything that you want to have happen. Um, when you eat roughly at your resting metabolic rate, it's a perfect homeostasis. Your body says, all right, we're good to go. We're not storing anything. We're not, we're not expending too much. When you eat at your active metabolic rate, again, it still finds a, a beautiful homeostasis between uh, those two expenditures. When you eat way too many calories, it's got a signal, says obviously we're in feast time. Let me go ahead and store them. Um, next slide, please. So if you're still having trouble wrapping your brain around the concept that, you know, there's a study called the Tweaky Diet. Uh, professor Mark Hopp, Kansas State University. He is a nutritional uh, professor and uh, he was holding a class where he was explaining to his class, it's calories in, calories out team. And of course that one, you know, uh, precocious student jumped up and he's like, bullshit. And so he's like, I'll prove it. And so when he said he'd prove it, he was basically taking in about 2,600 calories daily, okay? He dropped his caloric intake to 1,800. Now, when he was eating 2,600 calories, he was eating lean meats, vegetables, fish, all different sorts of things, things that you would, you know, sustainable. He dropped it down to 1,800, and he only ate Hostess cupcakes, Twinkies, and to break up the monotony of all the sweetness, he would eat Doritos. That's what he ate for 10 weeks. You want me to tell you what happened? He lost 27 pounds. Dropped his body fat percentage, dropped his BMI. So I'm going to crush everyone's hopes and dreams here. Carbs do not make you fat. Okay. Fat does not make you fat. Protein does not make you fat. An overabundance of calories with lack of movement is what is, is what is increasing your adipose white cell fat tissue. Okay. Next slide, please. Here's another myth. Basically, you can't eliminate those fat cells. You just simply decrease their volume size. And so in that balloon, in which I spelled balon, okay, don't, somebody, nobody spell checked me? <laughs> I don't know what that is. But anyway, you're basically asking it to store energy because you're not moving enough. And so all we have to do is figure out, and again, there's, there's multiple calculations you can do there for free. If you're ever near any one of our facilities, we actually have a body kiosk that will basically know your age, your height, and uh, it calculates everything for you uh, via uh, near-infrared technology. And so stop in. Again, go see Colin. Go see anybody else at one of the other locations. Tell them I told you you could come in and get your, uh, your, your BMR, your RMR, so that you can start at least looking and tracking where should I roughly be, okay? Next slide. Now, in order to target fat loss, only fat loss, okay, you have to increase your skeletal muscle tissue because what you have to know about the two tissues in, they're not friends. Uh, in fact, all of your, you know, tissues to some degree are not friends. Uh, think of, you know, everyone here has worked for a company right now. Does the marketing department like the HR department? No. Does sales like HR? No. They, they constantly, they work for the same corporation, but they're not friends. Okay. They're often bickering and they're often firing nutrient resources. Same, same concept. Okay. But what we know about skeletal muscle tissue is it is the most preserved biologic function is movement. Otherwise we'd be plant. 
If you think about, you know, our, our species and where we, you know, exist on, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the order, our species is, you know, it's, it's moving. We have to go get our own food, whereas plant can sit there, you know, and make its own food. Um, so it's a very, very preserved function. And it's actually very, very ingrained into all of our bodies and all of our DNA and can be reactivated. I don't care when. You can take a 90-year-old person, put them through a really, really slow cadence, high intensity uh, protocol, and they will get numbers back of youth. It's already been proven. Those studies have already been proven. So uh, next slide, please. The reason I say it's different and why it would be dangerous right now, let's say you have an RMR of 1600 and you choose to eat 200 calories less. So you're putting your body in a, in a caloric deficit, okay? And you do cardio, steady state. Every day I'm showing up to the gym and I'm doing 40 minutes of running. Your body recognizes that's new level of homeostasis and it immediately responds by saying, the vessel in which we currently run is no longer getting the same amount of new nutrients. So your board of directors walks in and says, look, team, fire cell, budget across the cost of board, 10%, fat department, fire somebody, muscle, fire somebody, bone, fire somebody, nervous tissue, fire somebody, brain, fire somebody, just whack, whack a doodle across the board. It's, it's an easy fix. Look, everybody, let's just take a budget cut. Everybody, no problem. Next slide. However, if you take your RMR 1600, you choose to eat in the caloric deficit, and you focus on strength training to the point that I described earlier, momentary muscular fatigue, your body will not only discriminately choose to target only fat, and the reason why it will do that is because, again, your body wants to replicate itself out into the future. That's the whole purpose of DNA. It's just trying to exist further past today. If you challenge its ability to move, it recognizes that as a huge threat. The board of directors comes to the table and once again says, look, this happened. I think we should do budget cuts again. Muscle is going to jump up and be like, do you think it's a good idea that we fire somebody from my department, the department that keeps us moving? In fact, muscle is going to be like, no, I need to hire two more people. And everybody's going to kind of look around and be like, you know, he's right. If we can't move, we're in trouble. And so then Bones going to be like, whoa, 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 who do you think supports him? I support him. Everybody's going to look around and be like, you know, Bones right. All right, you get to hire two more people. Nervous tissue, brain tissue, everybody except for who? And look down at the end of the table, guess who's left? Good old fat. He was only a temp agent anyway. He actually wasn't a part of the company, okay? He was just a 1099 employee. You feel free to fire him at any time. You just have to send him the right signal, okay? He was supposed to be there in time of need, and it's now our time of need, all right? Next slide, please. So here's the last piece to the draw dropping puzzle. Next slide. Unhealthy diet contributes to approximately 687, excuse me, 678,000 deaths each year. And basically more than 84 million adults or one in three, 33% of people have prediabetes. 90% of them do not know they have it, okay? These are things that we can fix right now. Um, Here's the best part. You don't even have to win all the time. If you only eat two meals a day, two times seven is 14, focus on winning like 10 battles. Your body will get a better signal. It'll say to itself, we've been at this really, really cool level right here. It doesn't have to be five days in a row and then two days, you know, blow it out of the, the, the water. Live a, a realistic lifestyle. A realistic lifestyle means if I want to be a Kaba member, I want to go to a cool kick-ass Kaba event. At said cool kick-ass Kaba event, there's probably going to be some nachos on the damn table. Think about the nachos. Know what you're going to be eating. Sustain your caloric intake for that part of the day and make sure that you're ready to go. Set yourself up with a low-calorie protein shake, maybe that's starting off that morning. Whatever protein source you want to get it from. Peas, vegetables, whey. Uh, I don't care in that sense. Just set yourself up for success and not failure because assuming that you're never going to be have to have a dinner party or go to an event where you know calories are going to be a big deal, set yourself up for success. If you eat three meals a day, three times seven, 21. How many battles are we going to win? About 14 of them. Win about 14 battles and you will be so much better off. Okay. Um, I will conclude at that point in time. I, I maybe have said some things that, uh, people weren't out of work, so I give a chance for some uh, some Q and A. That was amazing, Frank. Thank you so much. I actually have been taking notes <laughs> <laughs> myself the entire time. 
And uh, I know I'm kind of on it and I, I need to come in for my consultation um, that I, that I won, which was very exciting at the after five at Marlowe's. Um, but I'm in a different place because, you know, I've always tried to build muscle and my body type is different. I can't. So what would have to happen on yours is you would actually have to eat in a caloric surplus and a minimum of 50% of those calories. So what you need to know also is that your body discriminately chooses to eliminate tissues that are expensive. And so a, an expensive tissue is muscle. Every pound of muscle represents 50 to 100 energy calories necessary just to exist. So if it's in a caloric deficit, it's going to be like, well, who can we fire and who should we fire? If you're doing just regular basic movements, it'll fire muscle. Because it's like, look, fat doesn't cost any money to exist, but that pound of muscle does. And so it will actually discriminately choose the fire people that cost more money. In other words, <laughs> the CEO, you know, he makes more money. Let's fire him. <laughs> let's not fire the temp agent. Let's fire the CEO. He makes more money. And so what you have to do for you is we will figure out your RMR and we'll actually put you on a, you're actually going to have to eat more. To synthesize muscle protein, you must have an available source of protein. Otherwise, believe it or not, your body will steal from other areas. Right now we all have muscle in absence of true in good macronutrients, it'll steal from a nutrient dense source. And that is not fat. Fat is not a nutrient dense source, but lean muscle tissue is. Interesting. And that would be I, the reverse. Yeah. that's a good point because I know, well, I was a runner um, when I was in college and that was, I was so, so lean, but I didn't realize back then that I was burning my muscle when I was running. Were you long distance or um, sprints? Sprints. Sprints. And so Again, probably had great legs. Think about like a sprinter. Think about like um, Carl Lewis. We're all that age. Carl Lewis, Ben Johnson. Do you see those guys? I mean, their legs are just massive. Yeah. They're massive. They, are. they almost don't weight train. The 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 act of 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 a hundred yard dash. If you were here's a great example. Um, the firing of their three muscle groups, which slow twitch muscle groups, intermediate and fast twitch they are able to fire their muscle groups just without fail. Their heads, you could put it on a laser and their head would never move. Nothing else moves with their legs, but their toe strikes are representative of four to five times their body weight. Wow. And so their muscles are all their bones. All those things are happening. If you took a cheetah and did the exact same thing, a cheetah's head does not move. When it's on the prowl, it's like this. Everything else is moving, but all it's doing is heading forward. Look at a sprinter. Now look at a jogger, someone that's running a marathon, bouncing around because they don't need those same muscles. Their right. bodies are designed for, like if I needed to go long distance, would I buy a Hummer H3 or would I buy a Prius? You'd buy a Prius. Yeah. Because Prius has got a smaller engine, smaller frame. It's going to get me farther, longer on less. Right. By a Hummer, guess what? It's going to take too much energy to get me there. And so your body's going to view that thing. You're sending it a signal. Look, we're going on long distances, man. We're not doing short bursts of energy. I don't need that. But you actually do need that. The um, uh, not to, Like I said, not to get too technical, physiologically, but the, the signaling that's being done in your body when you do physical load work is incredible. The benefits to your cardiovascular system, but you won't look cool in a Prius. <laughs> make no mistake about it, my friend. I can look cool in anything. I'll make I'll make a Prius look cool. <laughs> but no, I do agree. I do agree. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, the chemical signal or the messaging that's going on right now, just in the past decade, so much more research is finally being done because the medical profession is finally starting to catch up with, look, we got to stop treating everything with a damn drug. We need to start treating things with actual physiotherapy. Um, you know, we have to be able to fix the body the way it was originally meant to be fixed, not with, oh, got this, here's a drug. Oh, got this, here's a drug. Oh, got this, here's a drug. No, we need to fix the source, not, not treat the deficiency. You know, sarcopenia, the loss of muscle tissue, that's not a requirement. Look at a look at a hunter gatherer Aboriginal in, in 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 Australia, lean, good packs, good quads, because they're walking around all day long, chucking arrows at shit. You know that's how they stay fit. Get something, bam, let's eat, let's grub, no problem. Berries, you see some berries? Let's get those berries. Let's eat that. A little bit of shrubbery. Let's eat that. They're eating, walking all day long, and they're lean. Their body has a perfect homeostasis in upon their activities. 
Your body's just going to do what you tell it to do. And by all means, I'm as guilty as the next man. (laughs) Where is this machine of, uh, that make you feel like, uh, terrible after you get on it <laughs> so actually the reverse so i worked out yesterday okay I think 14 minutes and 31 seconds is all it took me okay. um because the goal is momentary muscular fatigue so it, we're located in carrollwood on uh, northdale mabry um so if you come into our facility obviously it's your private one-on-one it's just you and colin uh the the we book out by 20 minute appointments and okay. in that 20 minute appointment you're going to do large muscle groups first. So we'll do compound movements, which require multiple joints. So like we'll start off with say a pull down, a chest press, a leg press, maybe a bicep curl and a tricep extension. So total body, anterior deltoids, posterior deltoids, back, chest, everything's gonna be activated. Your core is activated the entire time. And so since our machine offers what's known as variable resistance, as I said before, in this motion right here, I am seven times stronger right here okay. than I am right here. So if I go to the regular gym, I actually have to work out in my weakest range because I got to be able to push it off. Okay. With variable resistance. I now have the seven times there and then the weakest position, the seven times again, the weakest. But as you continue the exercise, your energy units dissipate. You begin with 100 units right. in that muscle. By repetition two and three, they've dissipated. It varies with you. You okay. now are perfectly matched with whatever Sharon walks in with, with whatever Diane walks in, whatever Michelle, wh- it adapts to you, okay. the user, not the other way around, not the fixed weight that exists. Okay. Okay. So I was thinking, I was talking about, okay, so that was the workout machine. The That's the workout team, machine. The, the other one team. is in our facility. It's in our lobby. So all you have to do yeah. is uh, set up with Colin. And like I said, if you do that, you might as well get a pump while you're at it. I call it a pump because you feel so pumped up. Like you're so energized. And I'm going to be very clear also. I fucking hate exercise. Uh, Okay. I'm not kidding around. I think it's the most worthless event in the entire world. (laughs) I just, I just, I hate it. I hate the idea of going into a sweaty gym to exercise. I'm like, how did this happen? Oh, I know. I I ate too many calories. I mean, think about it. Okay. What name me an exercise that a caveman did. Right. What, there. Was the gym? what gym do they go to? Do they exactly. go five days a week? Yes. No, our species wasn't designed to need that. You we didn't messed back, it up. You didn't bring back a rabbit. Mama send you back out. You know, we we messed it up. <laughs> we were all born with the same amount of muscles. We all had the the good gen, the good uh, ability to uh, remember. You wouldn't be here if at some point in time you had a good gene pool. Yeah. Because in, in you remember, you're only going to choose the best to mate with the best to continue to replicate the cycle. So you come from a good gene pool. We just started adding in deficiencies in said gene pool, then replicating again. They're not all, your genetics do not determine your outcome. You can reverse certain parts of your genetics. It's very important you understand that. By the way you eat, the lifestyle, the amount of body fat composition you carry on, all those things are signal messengers to the rest of your body. We're either going to be a really good vessel or we're going to be a really bad vessel. And you can mess it up. I say your body's a science project. I mean, you got to figure out the science behind it. The food, the exercise, the air you breathe, the water you drink, everything. It's a- but, and then, so other things I want to think about, remember, we're not as fragile as we think. And what I mean by that is if we were, we wouldn't be here on this call right now. Yeah. 50,000 years ago, homo in space, there were other hominid species during that same time. Our homo sapien brain, the part of our, our frontal lobe, we just evolved. And in that evolution piece, we got a little too smart for our bitches. And mm-hmm. so we started overthinking the thing. If God forbid I took us back down to a you know a nuclear holocaust, you know, what would happen? He, <laughs> I throw you on a deserted island right now. <laughs> I promise you, you'd eat all the bananas and mangoes you want. And you still wouldn't gain weight. Yeah. It's about caloric intake. Don't overcomplicate the system. Now you don't have a, uh, an accountant inside going, ah, 201, Frank. Nah, I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm a store it signals signals it's about battles it's about life as a whole not every day don't blow up a whole day and think i'm gonna go 3400 calories today big yeah. macs and cheeseburgers you know just try to have a mess up meal but again track it on my fitness pal it's a free app it tells you your right. macros for free that's what track i said how do you how do you know how many calories are in everything oh my god you know it's just ridiculous dude it's so, and then like i said those apps are so simple because pretty much everybody out there has already logged something so all you gotta do is type it in hit search boom pops up what's the, what's the app 
It's called My Fitness Pal. Okay. It's a free app. I recommend it to anyone and everyone. Um, you'll set up goals. And again, even about that, um, you know, if you go in and learn your RMR, we'll teach you to basically to, to eat based on your activity level. It'll calculate one for you. And then we'll put one based on your, you know, your activity. And then again, the first thing that I would recommend beginning is a set of bands or maybe even a set of weights and start some variable resistance. Um, hell, you can do a what's called a 90 second repetition. Mm -hmm. 90 second repetition is you take it and you start out here and for 30 seconds, you're slowly lowering it down for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then for 30 seconds, you're slowly pressing it up. So your muscle is under constant load. And then for 30 more seconds, you're slowly lowering it down. It's a 90 second repetition. You should be fatigued. Right. <laughs> you should basically be fatigued. One rep. I got, a, I got a son trying his best to gain weight, you know? So and he is actually going to need to do stronger loads at variable spots. What he can do, believe it or not, the, 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 the first thing that they tell them is got to be in the gym, two sets, do this. The stimulus just has to be deep enough. You have to allow it. Uh, Arthur Jones trained Casey Vietor. Casey Vietor yeah. is a uh, Mr. Olympia, like six time Mr. Olympia. He's a genetic freak. He added on, he told him, you're only allowed to train two times a week under my protocol. He added like 35 pounds mm. of lean skeletal muscle tissue to Casey Vietor, a bodybuilder, a professional bodybuilder. Mm. Uh, it's called the um, uh, West Point study. Let's Google the West Point study. West Point study. Do you have an uh, age limit in your gym? Or is Absolutely. it a gym? It's a, it's a studio, one-on-one. -on -one. It's about the size of your office that's behind you. Okay. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Age limit would be if you're if you're tall enough to reach the handles, okay. you're good to go. Okay. He's six foot two and weighs uh, 150 pounds. He's like trying to do his best to gain something. Absolutely. No, no. That, uh, like I said, the only thing we would have to do with him, again, I explained, stimulus organism response. Yeah. His only thing would be talking himself out of going and working out. Yeah. Because I'll create a deep enough stimulus on his chest, on his back, on his legs, and then he has to let do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Let it so rest. when you do a uh, mechanical strength training load, you're actually burning calories 24 to 48 hours after the exercise is done. Okay. Because what you're doing is you're shoving, you're, you're, you're shoving mitochondria into the cell and it backs up. Think of like a really, really cool uh, uh, nightclub where the yeah. velvet rope is up. There's yeah. a lot of people waiting to get in the club. Right, right. The cell is the club. And so your body is just basically letting one in at a time. And so it can only shovel in so much mitochondria. So it's backed up waiting to get into the club. So for 24 to 48 hours, you're still letting in mitochondria into your cell, which wow. helped the aerobic and anaerobic subsect of your metabolism. Okay. What's your address of your uh, studio? It's uh, 13008 North Dale Mabry. Okay. Yeah, they're right next to Maple Street Biscuits. I always tell people, it's so funny that you're next to them. <laughs> so I'll do you one better. I'll do you one better. If you go down the line, and this is all brand new to some degree, you got chilies on the very end. You got this new churro joint called Churroholic. You got uh, Maple Street. You got uh, Anthony's Cold Fire Pizza. Yeah. Directly next to us is a damn ice cream place that on their window, and I took a screenshot of it, nothing against, uh, I think it's called D-Lights, because they may have become cabin members, so er erase this. It's like no fat, no this, no carb, no, I'm like, well then, how the hell is it ice cream? Yeah, if the ice cream like that existed, I would have already been eating it. I feel like I was on an episode of Seinfeld. It's, it's no fat, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's just incredible. I'm like, every, you, you guys know why it is. Think about it. There's nine restaurants left and right of that. Circles Bistro and an ice cream joint. That's what I'm directly in between. Yeah. So just, I mean, decide again, like I said, it's, it's, it's a mathematical equation. Figure out if you can, if you win more battles than you lose, you got a good chance at not, at not gaining weight that you don't really want. It's going to affect your, your longevity of life. Yeah. Get longer. Yes, absolutely. Well, and especially right now with, with COVID and, you know, everyone should be trying. I think a lot of people are trying to be healthier, eat healthier and take care of One of the coolest things that happened, I will say that came out of this very, very negative um, people that would normally you'd had to drag, kick and pull to go on a walk. 
There's freaking walkers all over my neighborhood now. I was like, I just drive down the same street. I never saw any of you guys walking. But then tell people, guess what? You can only stay at home. You cannot go out. You cannot do this. Or like, honey, you want to take a walk? I'm like, yeah, let's go. Forget it. Any anything is better than what we're doing right now. Anything is better than what we're doing. So I saw a lot of people start to walk, maybe start to pick up exercise as a form of just passing the time. I mean, right. think about what do you do in prison? <laughs> you know. They exercise, they do push-ups, you know. Basically, it's what we became. We became a bunch of prisoners. And we we're like, look, I mean, like, we better do something. Otherwise, it's going to get bad. And so there, there was, I say, a little bit of good people understanding that exercise, how it benefits your body. It can fight off the ability to, you know, viral infections and things like that. If you look at the numbers, people that were healthier going in had a significantly higher chance of, again, I, I had COVID. I had COVID in late uh, November, both Lisa and I. 10 days. I got my, you know, I got my test. She said, you're COVID positive. We hung out at the house, slept a little bit more than I normally sleep because I was tired. Bones ached a little bit. I lost taste and smell, you know, not to downplay COVID again. I got it. I had it. I'm probably in that same 99% category. I mean, I'm not physical peak health. I carry roughly like 26% body fat. I should be about 22 to, you know, 20. You, you know, you give your body, give your body a chance. It can do some amazing things. How about age uh, with your program? Um, like my mom's 80 and I always tell her, go exercise, go walk, go do stuff, keep active, mom. And she is who we're designed around this. So it's the machine is static free. It's robotically controlled resistance. So there are no weights. And so in doing that, like I have clients older than her right now in multiple locations. Um, they are who we were designed around the studies and all this, the slow cadence was designed around people that are not good at exercise mm -hmm. that have never stepped foot inside of a gym. We are actually putting them in a safe position before the exercise, keeping them in a safe position during the exercise, limiting their range of motion so they can mitigate injury mm -hmm. and then fatiguing their musculature to a great enough degree that their body's like, this feels new and fun. Mm -hmm. I haven't felt this since we were girls riding on our bikes together. Yeah. That's exactly the sense. And they've done studies where they've measured output before and after. It's like re re renewing to youthful levels by yeah. doing 15 to 20 minutes worth of high intensity resistance strength training for yeah. anybody. Deconditioned people, bedridden people now walking on their own volition after 10 to 12 weeks of said protocol. Yeah, extend your life. Yeah, that's incredible, and it's 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 revolutionary because it's uh, it's a mindset that that a lot of us have, and I'll include myself in that. You know, I mean, I thought you know for many years I thought cardio was what I needed to do. Cardio upregulates cortisol and it tells your body, "Go ahead, store some fat. We're gonna need it for a journey later." But you're what's called skinny fat. Mm -hmm. No offense. Well, that's okay. exactly what it is. Think, yeah. think, think of a marathon runner. They're lean, but what do they do before the day of a marathon? Anybody know? They carb load. Carb. They eat the shit ton of carbohydrates oh. because that's your muscle, and your body's source of fuel. Spaghetti. They carb load. Give me some spaghetti. Yeah, because they know exactly what's necessary. The next day, I got to go on a long journey. So yeah. they give an overabundance of calories. You know, yeah. you want to talk about diabetes? Um, diabetes, think about it from this fashion. What do bears do every winter? They, they, they pack on the fat for the hibernation. For the they long actually long. put themselves in a state of type 2 diabetes. They give themselves type 2 diabetes. Upon the same amount of time that berries become available, they eat the crap out of berries. They're eating everything they get their hands on because they need all that sustained energy so that when they're asleep hibernating, their body sustains its temperature. It does what it's supposed to do because it's at their rest. It's at their rest point. One pound of fat represents 3,500 energy calories, 3,500 energy calories. You can exist off that for quite some time. I'm looking around the room, no one's RMR. My RMR is about 1901. Um, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm five foot six, but I'm stocky. I carry a lot of muscle uh, tissue. So it's based on that. It's based on the amount of muscle I need to sustain that level. Um, to, to tap into the fat storage requires that threat. Without that threat, my body will just keep storing it as long as I keep drinking Stella's to the tune of six, you know, every other day. <laughs> Super, Bowl. Super Bowl coming up. Super Bowl coming up. Hey, hey, I'm, wearing my, I'm wearing my Bucks red. That's all right. There you go. I'm I know. Bucks red. Yes. Yes. I wore my Bucks stuff yesterday, actually. I hope it gets here before the Super Bowl. So, so you have well, any 
Cava specials or yes, yes. Like so Cava members, their first is absolutely free, and then we normally charge fifty five dollars a session, so it's forty five for Cava members. So okay. I mean, do basic math. It's forty five divided by seven. You could get a, you could basically change your body's composition in the safest, most efficient way possible for like a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And wow. then all you'd have to do now is with new renewed energy, freaking move, get out and move, take a walk, do something else. We'll take care of the actual exercise. I'll give you the purest form of exercise, the perfect dose. Focus on the nutrition, listen to your RMR, eat above it when you have to, because you're going to party, you got to live life and your body will acclimate itself to the new homeostasis that you're creating. It will represent the threat. It will recognize it. It will make an adaptive response. There's nothing special, with all due respect, nothing special about any of us right now. So we can saying, all do that. You're saying two times a week, $45 a session. Is that what you're saying? Two times a week for great results. One time a week to just get going. Okay. One time a week to just get going. But yeah, two times a week. So we couple it. So like Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, or Wednesday, Saturday is the perfect dose. Like I worked out yesterday. I'll work out again on Thursday. Um, it allows my body the perfect amount of time and rest to completely, you know, recover from what was being done so that my body is ready to absorb the next stimulus. And since I'll never reach your phenotypical or genotypical expression, exercising like that, there is no plateau. You, you're not going to turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. If you weren't him before, you're not going to be him after just doesn't, it's not, it's not in the cards. <laughs> it's just yeah. not in the cards. But what we can do is on men, women. I mean, I got, like I said, if you look at, um, if you're not a member of our quick hitters group, um, uh, I'll send out invites to all, to anyone. Um, it's just a group. It's our, it's our community of people just like us. Clients across the nation focusing on a little bit change and they're doing high intensity resistance strength training. And these are men and women that you would look at and be like, it's every one of us right here. Literally, we are the perfect gamut. 68% of our clients are female, 32% are male. Average age is about 52 years of age. Um, so it's about focusing on a safer way to exercise because what did we all say? Oh my God, I was running behind. I thought I was gonna have to do this for my car. She's in her freaking car right now. We're so damn busy. We make ourselves so busy that what do we? what's the first thing we're willing to exclude? Ah, exercise. Oh. Yeah. If I bowl it, there's 10,080 minutes in a week. I need 20. I need 20 minutes to drastically change the way you exist. Mm. Okay. If you focus on the nutrition piece of things, you cannot out exercise a bad diet. I want to be very clear on that. Anybody that tells you otherwise, selling you a bill of goods. Mm -hmm. There's not enough exercise in the world. Michael Phelps, on one of his hardest training sessions, burns about 12,000 calories doing what he does. You ain't Michael Phelps. So don't eat like you're him. You get on one of those elliptical machines. Don't trust the calories that it told you you burned. Yeah. It's a bunch of bull. Mm -hmm. It's about a third of what it says on there. Wow. You're not expending enough energy. More importantly, why are you doing taskless? Again, activity with no purpose means a waste of time. I want the purest form possible in the safest way possible. I had a spinal bone fusion. I lost nerve tissue in my legs. I was a soccer player. I didn't think I was gonna be able to run again. My legs and my body look better than it did prior to the injury. I'm in my 40s, late 40s now. I, I'm, I'm better, I'm stronger and have better muscle tissue than I did when I was in my 30s and 20s. Because again, give your body the right dose, let it do what it does. If you're not trying to be on the cover of a magazine, don't get me wrong. Are there protocols? Am I saying that there are not protocols where six days a week would, yeah, if you're training to, be a physique competitor. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, am I saying that cardio is, 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 is garbage across the board? No. If you're a endurance runner or you want to run a marathon, probably should train that skill. That's a skill. Yeah. You should train your body how to be able to sustain itself. During, I am not signing up for a marathon anytime soon. Well, not beach, today, not tomorrow. Beach season is coming up. <laughs> Running's not going to help that. <laughs> Tacking on skeletal muscle tissue will help my body composition change. It'll, it'll make the way I look in this sweater different. It'll make my ability to go like that look different. Not cardio. Cardio won't do that. Mm. Absence of muscle does not make you look stronger. Increasing skeletal muscle tissue makes you look stronger. That's why if you go into a gym right now, everyone's been to one, the people over there lifting the weights probably have the body composition that you're striving for. But yet you're going to sit on the outside 
where the cardio machines are at. Because you're thinking to yourself, well, I'll lose the fat and then I'll go over there. Just go over there now. You'd be better off just going over there now. Pick up something heavy in a real safe fashion and slowly lower it to the point where you fatigue your muscle. You're like, holy crap, I can't do it again. Momentary muscular fatigue. Your body will thank you for it. Wow. Well, you've got me motivated. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It sounds good to me. So I'm definitely looking forward to coming in to visit you guys. And um, I can't say enough about this presentation, Frank. This was excellent. It was a lot of, I mean, I took a lot of notes myself. Thank a you. lot of great, great. And you're a wealth of information for sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. Well, like I said, it's been out there for so long. I want to get it out to regular people. We are all fighting that same battle. We are just yeah. so driven and we're so busy. And uh, we tell ourselves what we want to hear. Like I said, there, there's a good old saying. If you, you want to find truth in something, you'll you'll research it. And unfortunately, Google sometimes hurts us because you can Google 10 things in one direction and I can, I can give you the Google in the opposite direction. This is all science-based information. It's been around for years, believe it or not. And Frank, it's, one more time, what's the name and, name and phone number of your company? It's called Quick Hit Fitness Labs. And then the um, Collins direct line is 813. Let's see. I don't have that one memorized. And actually, we just talked about that the other day. <laughs> uh, it's in the Kappa website. 813-448-2735. And um, I'll put his email address in the uh, chat thing that you and I were going through. See Edwards at quickhitfit.com. There we go. And that one was directly to you, but I'll share it now to everyone. See Edwards at quick. You can just copy and paste. Yeah, I could have done that if yeah. I was any good. I'm not technologically savvy. I'm just 22. I, that's why that's why Diane was controlling my slides. I was like, what if I mess it up and I can't do it? <laughs> that's all right. Hey, there's a lot of it. Yes. There are I people can, that can do that, and there are people that can do right. what I can do. I, I can run my mouth. That's about all I can do. <laughs> We're that's all in the communication talking. business. <laughs> Excellent presentation, Frank. I feel cardio shamed today because um, <laughs> that's what I've been doing pretty much exclusively is like running five or six miles three times a week. So um, don't get me wrong. Definitely. Movement's movement's good, but purposeful movement, again, increasing muscle tissue changes your resting metabolic rate. For every pound of muscle, you're now 50 calories better. So which means you're burning more efficiently when you're not moving at all. So mm -hmm. Your that running thing, you're uh, in a smaller frame. It's 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 compromising muscle. It is. That's mm -hmm. why they're so lean and beautiful. I mean, no, you're wrong. They're they're lean and beautiful. But is it sustainable? I don't. Know. Again, if you're asking me. I'm a, I'm a I'm gonna try to choose the easiest path to success. The minimal oh. dose response is what we're what we're looking for. And so, thank you so well, much. I've got bands. I'm now. I'm like I have bands that have just been sitting there, actually still in the package. So. Gonna go take some of what you told us today and put it to use. Awesome. Instead awesome, of running. Awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and fatigue yourself where you can't do one more, you can't pull it up one more time and do everything slow. No, mm -hmm. there's no fast. There's no the goal of exercise shouldn't be to jerk something up and then slowly let it down. Or it should be slow in both directions because that's a that's a contraction, it's concentric. Mm -hmm. That's an eccentric motion. You're elongating the muscle. So when people stretch, it's the elongation of a muscle. So right there, perfect. And don't come to a point where it's a rest point. You want to work out in the, in the in the hardest third. Engage your core. Keep them contracted good. When you feel yourself start to lessen off, bring it back up. Slowly come back up. And you will get fatigued. Normally, he'd have done 20 repetitions. Yeah, I would have. <laughs> do, do some slow reps to where you damn near got to drop that 20. And you'll benefit from it more. All right. Mm, cool. Okay. Well, let's all go practice today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull my weights out tonight. Fantastic. Get get, yeah. get out and move and do it safely. Contract your core at all times while you're sitting in your chair right now. Think about your core, engage it. You need to protect that spine because that's the first thing that gets compromised when trying to pick up a weight. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Frank. Thank you guys yes. so much. I appreciate everyone's engagement. Yeah. Thanks so much for the questions.